Did you know the stars are constantly moving through the night sky? They actually move pretty fast too. You wouldn't see it with your naked eye, but your camera can see it. And if you take a series of long exposures, they will turn into beautiful lines or circles around the North Star or the Southern Point in the Southern Hemisphere, depending on which hemisphere you're in. Today I'm gonna to show you how to take star trails and it's really easy to do. You just need a camera and a tripod. We're gonna start out with whatever the widest angle lens that you have is and use the lowest f-stop number that it supports. Put your camera into manual mode and select that lowest f-stop number, then select a shutter speed of 30 seconds. For the ISO, we're gonna start with an ISO of 3200, but we might adjust that up or down to get the right brightness of the image. Now, if I lost you with the manual mode and all those settings, don't worry. Head over to sdp.io slash tutorial, where I have a tutorial for your camera that will show you how to dial those in. The ideal night for star trails is something cold and clear. Today, it's about 20 degrees below freezing. I don't know if you can see my breath, but I can. Ideally, there's no moon. And check the weather forecast because you don't want clouds rolling in and ruining it because you're gonna leave your camera out here in the dark for several hours. The longer, the better. If you do it for an hour, that's okay. You'll definitely see lots of movement, but if you can leave it out for six or eight or 10 hours, depending on how long your nights are, you're gonna get that much more of a dramatic star trails. When you're setting your camera up, power is gonna be a big problem. It's probably gonna run out of batteries pretty fast, especially if it's cold. So fully charge that battery. And if you have one and a camera that can support USB charging, hook it up to a USB charger and that'll keep it going for a little bit longer. If you have to interrupt the camera to, to replace the battery, you're probably gonna ruin your star trail. Let's get this camera set up to take some pictures. I've got a big memory card in here and I've just formatted it. You're gonna need lots of space. If possible, set your camera to take raw pictures. That'll let you adjust for any mistakes you might make in the process and adjust for how the light might change throughout the night. If you can only shoot JPEG or you only have room for JPEG on your card, you can make that work too. You just have to really nail the exposure. Getting your camera properly focused on the stars can be a real challenge. It can be anywhere from like kind of hard to almost impossible. Now, modern cameras have a good live view screen. You can use the rear screen and hopefully you'll be able to zoom in on that display and see maybe the brightest stars in the sky so you can manually focus on them. Older cameras, that might not be an option. If you have a camera where you cannot see the stars when you're in live view, then Hopefully your lens has distance markings on it. If it does, then pull that lens into infinity focus and that'll be pretty close. You might be able to look through the viewfinder and see some stars. If you still haven't completely nailed focus, take a test shot and then try adjusting it and take another test shot until you get it just as close as you can. For the sake of star trails, nailing focus isn't that important. If you're a little bit off, you can still have a cool effect. Now, we want our camera to take as many pictures as possible, and there are a couple of ways to do that. Most cameras have what's called an intervalometer built into them, where you can set it to take a picture, say, every second. That is a good start, if that's what you have to do. My tutorial at scp.io slash tutorial will show you how to do that too. A better way to do it is to use a remote shutter release that you can lock open like this one here. I am going to push this button here to lock the shutter open and set the camera to continuous shooting. Now, if I had a fast shutter speed, it would be like click, 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 click. But I'm gonna set the shutter speed to 30 seconds. And then every time the shutter closes, it'll automatically reopen because it's shooting continuously. Let's get this thing hooked up and going because I'm gonna die <laughs> out here in the cold. Now I'm taking a 30 second test shot so I can just verify the exposure and make sure everything's in focus. If it's too bright, use a lower ISO like ISO 1600. If it's too dark, so you can't see the stars, use a higher ISO like ISO 6400. Now let's do the warm part. I'm gonna start out processing raw files. If you shot your just JPEG files, you can just skip forward a bit. But assuming you're using raw files, I have them in Lightroom here. I like to do a little bit of processing on it first. First thing I wanna do is make the stars kind of look good and there's lots of light pollution here. I like to make it a little cool for night shots. So I'll adjust the temperature down. And then there's this building down here and it's a cool feature in the foreground. And I like to brighten it up. So I'm just gonna drag a graduated filter here. So you just jack the shadows up and raise the exposure a little bit. Now I'll select the first picture and you can see I'm not gonna process all the pictures. We were doing light painting this night, so some of these images have some light painting. But I'll select that first picture. I'll scroll down to the last picture that I wanna use, shift click, and now I'll click sync settings. And that's gonna apply those same settings to all those pictures in that set. 
And now that it's doing that, I'm going to export those raw files to JPEG files. So that's Control Shift E to export. I'll change the image format to JPEG and then I'll click export. While it's exporting, let's install Starstacks. I'll just open up my browser here, S-T-A-R-S-T-A-X. It's the first result. Let's go to the downloads page, click that link and then click download Starstacks. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can see the Mac version is here. The Windows version is here. You probably want the Windows 64-bit version. Download the zip file. If you're on a Mac, the DMG file will install itself pretty automatically. On Windows, it's a little bit weirder because it doesn't have a proper installer. So what you have to do is download it, open it. It's gonna prompt you to extract it first. So go ahead and extract it. And right now it's extracting it to a subfolder, my downloads folder, which is real weird. It told you it didn't have an installer. Great, now it opens it up for me and I need to drill into those same folders. Let's get in the star stacks folder here. And now I can double click starstacks.exe and the app will run. Those files are exported. You can see all the JPEGs here. I'll select them with control A and then drag them to drop images here. Now they're in star stacks. And doing the actual processing is as easy as clicking this tiny button that says start processing. And you can see in real time, it's adding the stars together. Plane flew through. The building is lit up from some of our light painting. And now it's done. All I have to do now is to actually save it. This third button is save as. I'll click that and then just pick a folder to save it in. So one more trick I want to show you in star stacks, just a different effect that I think is cool. If you go to edit and preferences, let's select comet mode here. As you can see, comet mode just blends the images a little bit differently so that they kind of trail off, but it helps to show th that there's an actual direction to the turn. And there you have it, a very cool star trail photo. If you want to learn more about astrophotography and shooting at night, check out my book, Stunning Digital Photography, the number one photography book in the world. It has over 14 hours of video in it. So even if you don't like books, you can just watch videos. I also showed you how to use some Lightroom. So check out my Lightroom book, video book. Also has 14 hours of video in it. And the Photoshop part is all covered in my Photoshop book here. Thanks to the author of Star Stacks. If you have any follow-up questions or comments, I'd love to hear your tips on how you get awesome star trails. Write a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe for lots more tutorials, camera reviews, and other fun stuff. Bye.